welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest with me. Rhonda Eason is the author of Jaded. She'll be with me for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and I have a great guest with me. If you love to read, if you're looking for the next big read that you're definitely going to want to check out, Rhonda Eason is the author of Jaded. She's with me right here, and it's such a pleasure to have author in the house. Rhonda, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, we love to see young people coming up and do different things, especially being an author. It's something so productive. Mm. It's a challenging field. It is. It has a lot to it. You're bringing a lot to the table, but it could also be very, very daunting as well. So we understand this. Anything that we could do to make it a little bit better, that would be great. Um, so let's dive straight into it. Tell us a little bit about your background before we even get into the book. Let's talk about you as a person. How did sure. this all kind of come about? Sure. Well, my background includes some military experience. Okay. Yes. When I got out of high school, I decided I wanted to be a television reporter. And then I decided that the best way to pay for college would be through the military. So I was in the Air Force for six years. I was a security police officer. I carried an M16 gun yes, every day, did. if you can <laughs> believe it. And then after that, I received my bachelor's degree. And I started doing a little bit of acting, a little bit of writing, decided maybe being a reporter wasn't quite the thing for me. And so I moved to New York and did a little acting and wrote a book since I've been here. Now, where are you originally from? Detroit. All right, so Detroit, you know, Motor mm -hmm. City, doing a couple of things. Yes, yes. How was that experience? Because now that you're a, a transplant living here, you change, you know, states, you're living here in New York now. In terms of the book, all these different experiences, how was it living over there now? You're here now, you have the military experience. Do you think that all had a part in the book? I think everything definitely lends itself to being used in the book. In fact, one of my characters, her father, is prior military because I had to use that um, mm -hmm. in my book. But being in New York, too, it's so much culture here, so many people here. So when you read the book, you really find that it has a New York flavor to it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the journey of getting to be an author and the process of getting to where you are today. A lot of writing and a lot of reading and a lot of classes. I think one of the things that make a really good writer is to be a really good reader. I know some people used to say, it takes you two weeks, three weeks to finish a book. And it does because I don't just read the book for the enjoyment of it, but I'm also trying to understand how the writer crafted the story, mm -hmm. you know, how they got their plots and how they use their dialogue. So I really study writing as well as just enjoy reading. And that's important because we, I'm sure we have viewers at home who are thinking about writing the book. They might be in the process of writing a book. But you touched upon something that's really important. You said you took a lot of classes. I did. And it's a twofold situation because I read online some of the best authors don't take classes. You mm -hmm. just It's just more natural, organic that way. But I think you need a little bit of that foundation. I don't know if you should believe that. I think definitely having some grounding and understanding, unless you're self-educated, unless you get the writing books and really study the writing books, I think it's really important to be in that environment where there are other writers who can read your work and critique their work, and then you can read their work, whether it's good or bad, mm -hmm. whether they're starting out or, or professional. Um, you can learn from it all. So I really encourage classes. It's really great. Now, off camera, you mentioned that you've done some workshops. You've actually still attend workshops. So the learning yes. never stops. Tell yes. us about that. Absolutely. I particularly um, enjoy going to Gotham, um, writingclasses.com, and they have great classes there. But there are places all over New York. Um, and it doesn't have to be a formal college, but formal colleges offer classes too, mm -hmm. continuing education classes where you can learn the craft. Absolutely, which is so important because it is mm -hmm. an art to write a book and make different chapters when mm -hmm. to know when are you going to end one pick mm -hmm. up with another maybe leave that for a little bit go back pick it up a little bit later right to, I think, to, to continue with the sequence right I think a lot of people believe that um, it's just based on talent and it's not it you can learn how to write well 
That is great. So let's mm -hmm. go straight into the book now. Jaded. Let's talk about Jaded. <laughs> when did this all start? When did you get the first get the inspiration for the book? Yes. I started writing Jaded probably three years ago. There's this thing in the writing community called NANO, um, National Novel Writing Month. And that happens every November. So it's about to start now. Mm -hmm. And the challenge is, your own particular challenge is to write a full novel. 50,000 words within one month, 30 days. So wow. that's how Jade had started. I decided um, to try to finish a novel in 30 days, and I did. Now, what I started with and what's here are two completely different <laughs> stories. It's, it's two completely different stories because a huge part of writing is revision. And you have to be okay with revising and getting down to who the character really is, which might mean that you have to kill some of your darlings, as we say in the business. Some of the things that you really loved about the character, you might have to get rid of in order to really Pretty hone true. in on the story and the message and the um, create the story you're really trying to tell. So it started off basically as a competition. Yeah. With myself. With yourself to write this book within 30 days. You did it. I did it. You did. Um, give us a little bit sneak peek because we're going to talk about what this story really is about. Yes. But the original, just so we could compare the two. What was in the original that didn't you know make the what? cut? I'd love to tell you, but that was three years ago. That was so far away, so long ago, and this story is so much different, and it's so much better. I mean, it's really a much better Do you laugh story. at it when you look back? I you, do. You can't, I right? do. I reread it recently, and um, I think it's funny and humorous and, um, and bold and fun. Yeah. So give us a synopsis a little bit because we have the readers at home who are definitely, we're going to have the book available online, let you know how you can pick up a copy, of course. Um, but tell us about, it's called Jaded. So what is the story about? So Jaded is a twist on one of the characters in the book and her name is Jade. The story is about a young woman who is down on her luck and she gets a great opportunity to work for a New York socialite and things start looking up for her until she finds out why she was really hired for the job mm -hmm. and that's when things get pretty dicey for her so ultimately she has to choose between um, love or money she has to decide how important her own morality is to her but the book is not preachy it's really a fun book so it doesn't preach it doesn't tell you to do this or to do, to do that it's more of a mix between um, the Devil Wears Prada and Indecent Proposal. So you have a young woman working for a tough boss who's very headstrong. You always know where you stand with her and sometimes it's not in a good place. Mm -hmm. um, and then she has to make this moral decision or maybe make a lot of money that she really needs. And so it's a story of can she have it all? Absolutely. You so, know, so it's one of those things that, like I'm going to make this choice. Yes. Yes. Um, you could decide, do I go ahead, go ahead with it, maybe put your values aside. Yes, There's yes, a couple of different yes, things absolutely. that are in there that we see where Jade is hitting that crossroad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She has decisions. It's a juicy, juicy, juicy novel. Yeah. Very good. You know, juice is good. We love juice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll take a quick break. When yes. we come back, we'll go into the book. I really want everybody at home to connect with the story, mm -hmm. as much info and details about it, and then... We'll let them all know where they can pick all up right. a copy. All right, stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting down here with Rhonda Eason, who is the author of Jaded. And this is a fantastic book because, uh, like we're saying off camera, it reminds me a little bit of Scandal. As soon as I saw the cover, I was like, okay, Jaded. Has that little bit of, and we all know the TV program, Scandal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it has that little bit of a feel to it. Yes. So my character, Jade, who is the boss in this book, is very tough. And she's very much in the mind of Olivia Pope from Scandal. She's very tough. Um, she's a go-getter and she knows what she wants. Um, but she's also conniving and she's manipulative and she'll stop at nothing to get what she wants. So Saisha really has to figure out how to survive in Jade's world. 
Now, Saisha is basically the, the assistant. Yes. Let's go Saisha. through the story. Yes, I yes, yes. Let's dissect this. This is your world right now. <laughs> I want to get into so, the book. So Saisha is the main character. We call her Sai, and she is a law school student, but her heart really isn't into it, and she's failing a little bit. Um, she meets this wonderful guy in her class who is um, also a, a student at her law firm um, at her law school. Mm -hmm. And um, he tries to help steer her in the right direction. But ultimately, it's, it's her decision and she has to figure out what's best for her. And he's a good character in this book. I have a habit of writing stories with really good, strong black men in my stories because like that. I'm lucky that that's been my own personal experience. So that's what you get in this book. Very good. I mm -hmm. actually do like that. Yeah. You know, where you see a character, he's trying to help his girl out, yeah. lead her in the right direction. Um, and if you can tell us a little bit, how does she feel when she has, she, she knows she's hired, basically it was a, a plot. Mm -hmm. She's there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Kind of like everyone is kind of hired mm -hmm. for a purpose. You know, uh -huh. Well, I can get her to do five things. I'll pay her for one. But <laughs> right? I'm going to get her to do five. She right. doesn't know it yet. Right. She can do all five. It's called a bait and switch. Right? Basically. Yes. Uh -huh. How did she feel in that moment? Or how did she find out? She couldn't believe it. And um, one of the things about this book and about Saisha is that she's funny. So there's a lot of humor. Oh, so good. when she finds out what she's really hired to do, the reader is really in her head. And so it's um, an opportunity to laugh and to, you know, kind of raise an eyebrow. Like, hmm, what is she going to do? Because she's not, at first, she's like, no, absolutely. Out of hand, no. But then the more she starts to think about it and her situation, the more she's tempted. It's like, hmm, I could really do this. Mm -hmm. I know it's not the right thing to do. Could really use the cash. Could use the cash. But I might lose my guy. And why would she lose him? Um, he would be disappointed that she did it? He would be disappointed. And not so sure that he'd want to be with a woman who would, who do, would do what she's being asked to do. That's great. Yes. yes. Oh, the juice. The <laughs> lot, a lot of juice going on. Yes. And of course, there are subplots and everything else. So there, there's a lot going on in the book. So she has to make that decision because ultimately he would be upset. He may not want to stay with her. So yes. she takes a chance and she may lose him altogether. Yes. But she'll be in a powerful position. Yes. If she were to do that. Or step back for the money. Mm -hmm. And I mean, not take the money. But you have him. And it's exciting for her because, you know, the thing that I also explore in this book is that New York is a melting pot of people and of different financial backgrounds. And she doesn't come from money. And so now she's in Jade's world. And Jade is a New York socialite. Um, she's married to a very prominent person. She's wealthy. And everybody wants a little bit of that, right? Everyone wants to rub up against that a little bit. And so um, she really, it's also a glamorous book. You know, I could see I could someone, tell the cover. I love Lala Anthony, and I can totally see someone like Lala playing playing Jade, you know, being um, devious, but also very glamorous at the same time. Of course, because as um, Jade's assistant, you get to go to all these fancy parties, oh, you're right. going the night scene, right. and be on the video shoots, and all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. So her, she's excited exposed to a lot just being mm -hmm. surrounding herself by Jay that yes. opens the opportunity to be with so many other people yes which is a fantastic opportunity how does Jade's boyfriend feel I mean um Saisha's boyfriend feel about her even being exposed to that environment he's not impressed you know he, he's not impressed he's a down-to-earth guy who believes in working hard for for what you get so it, it I guess from the get-go, yeah, the whole job within itself, he would probably much rather her not, not even be there. Not even be there. Just just suffer. Take take a secretarial position. Take a temp position and, and just muddle through until something better comes along. Right. Was there ever a little bit of resentment between them as she's kind of trying to explain, listen, I'm oh, trying to make this happen. Oh, yeah. There's drama there. There's some serious drama there. And the reason so. I'm asking, I've been placed, <laughs> I've been in a relationship where my career, I've been vying for it. And uh -huh. it's like, are you going to sell yourself short? Are you going to lose your respect for yourself? This person just...